Um, for those of you who are wondering, the coffee will be here in about 15 minutes, okay? <laughs> if you don't want to talk into then, I totally understand. But I don't drink coffee, so it's quite selfish of me to, to not um, think about it, so I apologize. Um, welcome to our regional meeting for um, our last one, actually, for 2015. Um, we appreciate you all for signing up and for making it out here. And the um, first thing I want to do is do a round of introductions. Everybody here, and then I'm not gonna find anybody right here. And then we, um, I would like to introduce you to um, the president of Nickel Jesu, and have um, Eric come up and speak for the rest of the day. Come, Eric. <laughs> Eric's gonna come up and say a few words to us um, after we introduce everybody. Introduce themselves. So I'll start here and tell where you. I'm sorry, Terry, Tell your name and where you're from and your title. Uh, Will Lucas, Morehead City, IT Manager. Brian Key, Nash County, IT Director. Corey Mallon, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. I'll do on site support for the registrar's office. Uh, Jay Nicholson, host of the Increase Program. Joel Hartley, Davidson County, CIO. Eric Harvey, IT Director of Fingerprint. Daniel Parrish, Davis County, Network Assistant Ed. Bailey Butler, uh, Technical Support, City of Greensboro Field Operations. Great County, City of Charlotte, Data Services Manager. Nation Welfare, Robinson County, Operations Assistant. Mark Seal, Mother Robinson County, Information Systems Manager. Eric Sackman, out of Apex, Director of IT. Doug Noel, IP Operations Director for the Chapel Hill Carpenter City Schools. Uh, Shannon Thompson, the School of Government at UNC. Joseph Morton, Randolph County Social Services. Uh, uh, Nate Duggan, Randolph County Social Services, Computer Tech. David Carraway, City of Washington, IP Director. <coughs> Matt Garland, Randolph County, IP Structure Services. Uh, Dana Shu, Randolph County, IS Manager. Bobby Shove, City of Lexington, IT Service Manager. Chris Smith, City of Lexington, Assistant Administrator. Chris Niver, City of Conover, IT Director. Stephanie Panel, Catawba County Government, IT Manager. Marina Harris, City of Hickory System Down. Chris Anderson, North Carolina Zoo, IT Manager. And thank you, Chris, for helping us support you. Props to Gray Castle because this was Gray's idea and I just took it and ran with it. Gray said, let's do something different. And so I got in touch with Chris and, and, and we thank you so much for everything, Chris. Um, and I'm Felina Harris, for those of you who don't know, I'm the one that you see sent out those million messages on the list are it's me. So I am the membership chair for Nickel Jesus. But at this time I want to bring up Eric Harvey, who is the president of Nickel Jesus. So it's good to see you all. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to meet with you, and uh, hopefully throughout the day, as we network, I get an opportunity to talk to you a little bit more about your uh, about what's going on in your shops, and also get to know you as well. Um, I also can't uh, help but want to thank Chris again, and also Felina for uh, putting this on. We've been doing the original meetings probably for the last two years. Actually, Mark was heavily involved in that process, and uh, it's been very successful. We've been all over the state of North Carolina. And what's great about this when we do the regional meetings is we understand that our members, you all, can't be everywhere wherever we have an event going on. We do hold two uh, conferences throughout the year, a spring and a fall conference, that sometimes, again, due to budgetary uh, uh, restrictions or whatever, we can't just attend. So what we decided to do is do a regional meeting where we could bring a little bit of uh, our conferences to you. So today we're talking about a number of different uh, great things that um, are important to us in our IT shops and we want opportunities to know and share with you. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have you know, Shannon here with the Center of Public Technology who we value uh, tremendously. We have a great relationship with him. And it's always good to have her on site because with the CGCIO program, there's a big influence there for what's going on in IT in the state of North Carolina. I say that, but that's beyond the state of North Carolina. They're doing, they're doing really, really good things. But it's great because when we look at our membership and just how um, diverse we are, there's a lot of opportunities for folks to grow and learn. So we can do greater things here tonight uh, in the state of North Carolina with IT. 
But being here at the Spiritual Journal meeting always gets me excited because it's another time, opportunity to bring all our members uh, in and uh, uh, share and uh, just brainstorm on what's going on. And we don't claim to know everything, but we have an opportunity to learn and grow. So again, I can't thank Felina enough. She has to do all the logistics work, working with folks at lunch our host that uh, put it on the lunch. And also, we do have a number of other membership committee members here. I want to ask you all to stand up because uh, <laughs> but feel free if you like to. We've got a number of different I'm also a part of our board of folks here for Nipple Guru. We have Treasure, our Treasurer Joel Hartley, is here today. Marcus served on that board as well as a membership committee that I've in the past. We have Chris Smith and Chris and I are in the back, our membership, uh, excuse me, our uh, web and marketing committee. Uh, who else am I missing here? We have Shannon, she also served on our board. And, uh, and it's a pleasure to have her with us. Uh, our speakers, Jane, we have Rodney here. Um, who else is speaking this uh, morning? Chris, 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 Chris is. Chris That's right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you on our behalf. It's great because it's, it's no practice sometimes in speaking to have folks willing to step up and lead these sessions and, and uh, share a little bit about what's going on. It's important to us. And, uh, the more we do it, the more everybody gets comfortable doing it. And I would encourage you to do so. Even with the conferences, we have a lot of um, sessions and a lot of things we want to touch on and talk on, but sometimes it's difficult to find folks who are willing to do that. So I would encourage you to um, take those next steps if you feel led to. But again, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to serve you all. There's a lot of good things going on that the board's uh, trying to outline right now as far as goals and objectives for our organization and what we're trying to accomplish in this next year as I serve as the president with my current board and committees. And um, whether I say mine, but it's us all of us, and um, I just look forward to seeing how far we get and what's in school for this uh, organization. It's a great opportunity to be here as well. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Eric, and I, I thank you for introducing, um, we're recognizing the membership committee members as well. I can't sit up here and take all the credit for everything because they are helping me in the decisions as well. I just, I'm just here, I'm just the face that you see. But I thank the membership committee members because they are so active and so helpful. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. But before we get started, does anybody need to go and get coffee? <laughs> the coffee is here. So if you all want to take a couple minutes to go and get some coffee, it will be there. I'll go ahead and um, introduce our first speaker. Um, let's just talk about the agenda for today. Let me back up just a little bit. Um, so today we have um, Jay Nichols from the CIO from the city of Greensboro who will be um, speaking on making our team strategic partner versus just the service provider. And we actually had another speaker after um, Jane, but that fell through. So, um, oh, they want me to clap for more reasons. Wait a minute. And um, so Jane is going to speak, and we'll have question and answer after that. Um, we'll do something interesting or fun or whatever. Maybe everybody stand up and dance or something after Jane finishes. Um, or we'll go ahead and let Shannon come on up. Um, but we'll, we'll fill that, that space in, so don't worry. Even if we just sit around and network, that's why we're here, right? So um, anyway, and then after um, Jane, like I mentioned before, we have Shannon. Um, everybody had an opportunity to send questions to Shannon and Maurice. But I'm not sure if we got any at all. We got this many. Um, questions, but um, Shannon's still going to come up here because Shannon is just that awesome person who can come up here and do a presentation on the fly, right? <laughs> we'll work it out. We're, we're going to work it out today anyway. And we just like for Shannon to be in our presence. So um, after that, we do have um, a couple of presentations on IT in unconventional locations. I actually work for the Park and Recreation Department in, in Mecklenburg County, and I've heard have several people ask me, Okay, well, why would you need IT at Park and Recreation? But you're here today saying he's going to present on some of the different things that we're doing within Park and Recreation. And of course, we get to hear about the wonderful zoo. I cannot wait to hear about this. Okay. How we're tracking elephants. No? We're, we're, we're not going to talk about uh, internal zoo business. We've got uh, Dr. Mike Loomis, who's our chief veterinarian. He uh, pioneered and put together a GPS tracking program for elephants in Africa. Oh. And Dr. Oh. Curry and We'll also be speaking about uh, <laughs> some of the other programs that we have in Africa. Oh, okay. Awesome. And then we do stuff IT here with the stuff they do in Africa is a little bit more out of the box. A little bit more, okay. Um, all right. I'll, I'll always let my sons get school at Condonese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so devastated now. 
I should have. What was that trouble? Go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, so we have a pretty nice day planned out. And while we're in the middle of, of these um, presentations, in the middle of this um, regional meeting, think about if you would like to have a regional meeting in your area, if you would like to host it, um, let me know. Also, if you can think of topics um, that, we, that would be good at a regional meeting, please let me know. Everybody has my email address, so shoot me an email, or you can just let me know. I'm not going to forget in five minutes, but um, just shoot me an email so that I would know that as well. Any questions? That color smells so good. I just like the smell of it. <laughs> I don't it's drink cool. it. I like the smell of it. Any questions before we get started? If not, at this time, I would like to introduce to you again. This is Miss Jane Nichols. Jane Nichols, is that right? CIO of the City of Greenfield. Let's give her a hand. GIS data, 
Um, we also had a uh, consultant that we've been working with on other projects. We had them come in and they did um, what we call the focus site study. The focus site study provided information about the telecommun telecommunications networks that were in the areas of those economic development sites. I've got one here, I'll pass it around. So this provided uh, information that they can market these sites and say, bring your company here, build here, we've got uh, telecommunications in the area, we've got fiber in the area, um, there's uh, capacity for redundancy for your networks, but all that kind of information that I would think a company would want to know if they're going to locate there. So this is being actively used to market those sites. We've shared this information with um, economic development partners such as our Chamber of Commerce and uh, Regional Partnership. And they're using this kind of data to market the site. So, so that's been a good partnership for us with um, our economic development team. The other thing that we are working on and um, is a one dig policy. Has anybody um, implemented one dig in their, in their city? Um, the idea behind um, the one dig policy is to work with your water and sewer departments, your transportation departments, your um, engineering and utility coordinators to strategically plan to build out your network by leveraging projects that will dig and trench to build infrastructure. So, when there's a road project, or a sidewalk project, or um, water and sewer lines going in, get IT involved in those projects and let us put conduit in while you're digging those holes. And this is a way that we can expand our network infrastructure, but also put infrastructure in there that you could potentially lease to internet service providers that are coming into your city um, that, that are building their networks. So that saves them from having to um, dig up your roadways to put conduit in. Um, this is something we're just starting, we're just being brought to the table, but unless you talk to your infrastructure departments and let them know that you're interested in these projects and why you're interested, um, they're, they're never going to consider you when they're, when they're making those plans. The other thing I'm sure um, you've all heard about are smart cities and your planning directors are going to conferences and they're hearing about smart cities and they're wanting to know how do we become a smart city? What is a smart city? <coughs> uh, this is a topic that you should be um, probably interested in researching and talking to your planning directors about. I'm going to show um, a quick video. This is a YouTube video about a pilot that's being done in San Diego um, by GE. And it's, um, some of it's kind of a bad for GE in San Diego, but it's got some good smart city information in it. Uh -oh.
and to make the city a more livable and beautiful place. So it works by having wireless connection in this device that goes into the light fixture. They're going to be gathering data constantly from sensors. We can detect cars parking and unparking. You can smell smoke and alert officials to a fire. So we're in pilot stage today with the city of San Diego. We have approximately 50 intelligent fixtures. It's going to help with traffic flow. It's going to help with parking. It's going to help with environmental assessment. It's all about coming together to get the data and the information that we need to be a smart city. My favorite thing about San Diego is how everyone works together collaboratively. Incredibly, incredibly innovative. When it comes to investing in smart infrastructure, you need more than just someone to provide the product. You really need a partner, and Jimmy has been a great partner. They really care not only about their customers, but about the people that they serve. I think having the right light leads to creativity and a good work setting. We enter the next century gives us a competitive advantage here in San Diego because we realize we're not just competing here in California or indeed just the United States. It's about global. It's all coming together here in San Diego. And, and oh yeah, it's a pretty good place to live as well. Living in a smart city is like living in a city of the future. The one that was always science fiction can now be science fact. San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. S-A-N. GME is helping us unlock the potential of a smart city. So the, the thing really that I want you to take away from that, they talked about government collaborating with um, private sector and with the community to create these smart cities. And they talked about smart infrastructure. They talked about being able to um, sense um, the kind of situational awareness of what's going on, um, public safety, being able to detect fires. And this is the this is the future and this is what's coming. And having the infrastructure to support that is going to be very important. They talked about um, wireless connectivity, um, electric all the talks that says um, they collect data using sensors. <laughs> so, so having sensors uh, to collect data. But um, this, this smart city thing is, is happening, that's the future. And um, coincidentally, just this week, I got an email from one of the um, list serves that I'm on about a $50 million grant for uh, ideas surrounding transportation systems. And this is all about sm a smart city incentive around the transportation system. So I uh, emailed my um, Department of, Transportation, Department of Transportation director and said, are we going to apply for this? Um, he wasn't nearly as excited about it as I was, but um, reluctantly he agreed that we would apply for this. But I think this is a great partnership between uh, the transportation people that understand transportation systems and the IT people who understand uh, network and technology and coming together um, with ideas about this intelligent transportation system and we might get 50 million dollars so um, definitely going to give that a shot. Okay, communications. One of my goals um, as CIO is to promote our city as the leader in technology. So last summer, my staff and I inventoried the ways we use technology to deliver services. And we identified categories such as citizen engagement, public safety, the day-to-day -day operations of the city, cybersecurity, and more. And so we submitted that information to the Center for Digital Government to apply for recognition as a digital city. So as a result of that, the city of Greensboro is recognized as one of the top 10 digital cities in the nation. Uh, we ranked with Philadelphia, um, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, uh, Charlotte was a, a city that ranked in the population category of 250,000 and above. By, by using things such as, as, digital, as digital cities awards, Using your technology to get awards for your city makes you a partner in promoting your city. So I 
I uh, encourage you to do those things and become that strategic partner of promoting your city. And as a result of that, I would like to say we've gotten a lot of press, we've gotten local news, we've gotten national news, um, and we got contacted by um, National Public Radio Morning Edition as a result of that. So um, now I want to move on to our regional strategic partnerships. And the regional partnerships are partnering with um, local government CIOs, and Nickel G's, of course, is a great way um, to do that, to network and, and learn who your um, local CIOs and IT leaders are. Um, also, but to bring in your, your public schools and universities and colleges in your area, working with them, and regional councils. <coughs> One of our current regional initiatives is a um, cyber threat sharing program. Um, we at the city of Greensboro have multiple layers of threat protection and sophisticated um, systems in place to give us advanced warnings of um, cyber security threats. And I'm sure you have similar systems in place as well. So why not share this information? Um, this cyber security threat sharing program is um, what we're starting and uh, proposing as a regional, it could be a statewide program. Well, we share that information we're seeing. So when we see a threat coming in and we're taking steps to mitigate that threat, we share it with you and let you know what we're seeing and what we're doing and, and vice versa. So if you're interested in this program or want to be a part of it, just let us know because we'd love to um, include anyone who wants to be a part of that. We're also working on a regional initiative called the Triad High Speed Broadband uh, Initiative, or TriGig. I believe today we are witnessing the introduction of something that will change the world as we know it, and that is high-speed broadband. The ability to access and share data at gigabit per second speed is going to be a game changer in ways we cannot even imagine. High-speed broadband is more than a technology, it's a platform. High-speed broadband will change the way we work, it will change the way we educate, it will change the healthcare system with the availability of telehealth, and it will change the Internet of Things, and it will drive economic development. It is for that reason that I've been involved in this regional project called um, the Triad High Speed Broadband Initiative, or TriGig. TriGig is a collaboration between Greensboro, High Point, Burlington, Gilbert <coughs> County, UNCG, AMC State University. So the idea behind TriGig is to leverage municipal assets to encourage internet service providers to come into our cities, our region, and build these high-speed broadband, um, broadband networks. We as cities, counties, universities have buildings where equipment can be located. We have poles where fiber can be attached. We have um, conduit and we have dark fiber. So one of the assets that we're proposing to leverage uh, as part of the gig is um, Greensboro's fiber network. This is a map of our fiber network. This network was built out as a result of a signal system project that was started in 2007. As part of that project, the IT department added funding to add additional capacity um, to that fiber network to connect our facilities. So we um, expanded the network to connect uh, recreation centers, libraries, um, fire stations, police substations, uh, water treatment plants, and more. But as a result of that, um, we have approximately 200 miles of fiber across the city of Greensboro, and we have dark fiber available in that network. So that's one of the things that we want to leverage as part of this offering and um, in track here. We also discovered, as a result of our collaboration um, of TriGig, sort of a, a byproduct of, of that was, as we inventoried our, our networks and our assets, we discovered that we had networks in close proximity to one another. Um, our network in the green and Burlington's in the red, um, there's a 10 mile gap between those two. And it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a blue uh, right in here, blue is uh, the university network. So we have overlapping 
having, we have overlapping networks and we have close proximity to other networks. What would happen if we connected these networks and we started talking about uh, federated networks, how we could connect um, public safety agencies, how we could maybe potentially provide backup and recovery sites for one another. So these conversations were just starting to happen as a result of that collaboration between our regional entities. So what are some of the external partnerships and strategies that we're involved in? Whoops. Um, once we started talking about one dig and we got our infrastructure departments to sort of to pay attention um, and the utility coordinators and the, the franchise managers, uh, they started coming to us with with um, these projects that were coming into the city that we're going to dig for infrastructure. So the first project is um, a small cell deployment. Fiber Tower was coming in. They're going to um, put these small cell devices in the city and they're digging, they're trenching for fiber. So we got um, involved in this project. We asked them, can we put conduit in when you trench? They said, sure, no problem. So this is our first um, um, partnership, I guess, with private sector to do this, and, and this is the first project. So, circled in blue is the fiber run that, that Fiber Tower is putting in. The red around that is City of Greensboro Fiber. So, we thought strategically this would make sense for us to extend our fiber um, with this run right here. What is probably hard for you to see in that area. Um, Right behind there is our ballpark, the Greensboro Grasshoppers. To the right is a large construction site for a large hotel, retail, and um, apartment complexes are being built. And down below is um, a parking lot that we used for staging and managing the um, National Folk Festival that was in Greensboro in October. So strategically, we think um, having fiber in this area, number one, we know it will help us with the management of the photo festival. Um, we think from a public safety perspective, there may be a need in the future for surveillance cameras in this area. So this was a really easy way for us to uh, put infrastructure in for extending our fiber if we want to do it in the future. So that's our first um, project like this, and so far it's going really well. That's just We have another, um, another project to put surveillance cameras downtown. And this is something that our council um, asked us to do, um, uh, due to some public safety issues. The only problem was we have very little infrastructure downtown, um, no place really to mount cameras. We don't have a network downtown. So this was a challenge. So we, we reached out to private sector partners to help with this project. Um, Duke Energy has agreed to <laughs> allow us to mount cameras on their poles, um, and that was a huge hurdle. They've never allowed us in the past to do that. And um, we happen to know, because we were working closely with the local telecommunications company, um, North State, that they had fiber in the downtown area. And uh, so we went to them and asked them if they had fiber in that area and if there were chance that we could access it. And due to having a partnership with them, they were willing to allow us to access um, four strands of dark fiber in the downtown area to do this project, and they gave us a very good price on leasing that fiber. So having those partnerships and, and knowing those, um, those telecommunications companies in your cities that are building out their networks and knowing where their networks are may benefit you. Um, another partnership is um, with a local volunteer group. Does anyone uh, have a Code for America Brigade that they work with? Okay, Charlotte. Um, this is an awesome group. So Code for America, it consists of local brigades of volunteers who want to partner with municipal government to access your data and create tools or applications to address um, civic needs or to do things to benefit your city. Um, I was contacted by Code for Greensboro back, back in the spring and invited them in to meet with us and, and talk about um, what they're doing. And this has been 
a great partnership for us. They're currently working with us on two projects. Um, one, to provide access to local ordinance enforcement data to our residents. And one is um, to provide information and gather feedback about projects that our planning department is doing. Um, they also hold events called hackathons. And at a hackathon, it's a weekend event. Um, these teams, groups of teams come in and they, um, by accessing open source data, they create apps to uh, benefit the city or address some uh, need or issue. This one, Civicon was held in November. Um, I was a speaker at the event. I was also a judge at the event. And we launched, the city of Greensboro launched our, the beta version of our open access data portal. I'm really excited about the open data portal. I know some of you have them. Um, we're just in the beta um, test phase of launching ours. But we launched it at the event, and we put three data sets up there. One was um, permit data, one was local ordinance enforcement data, and one was fire inspection data. So during the, during the course of the event, um, they take that data or any open source data and create whatever they can create. And um, um, Sunday afternoon, uh, they present to the judges. I was blown away by what they did in the course of a couple of days. And, and I want to show you, I've got some screenshots of some of the apps. Um, one was, this is Greensboro app. And this app provided information <coughs> about restaurants, where they were, how they were rated, um, what they cost. It provided information about events, what's going on downtown at the Coliseum, at sports events. Um, it gave information about parks and trails and um, where, those, where those were located. And this is a um, train schedule. Just uh, a cool little app with all kinds of information of how this is Greensboro. This one was called GSO Flame. This took the, the fire inspection data and created heat maps based on uh, the category of fire. And it also gave information about the fire stations that responded to that. So you could look at um, structure fires, you could look at um, a period of time and see where they were located and how the fire, fire, stations, fire stations responded. This was one of my favorites. This was called um, Greensboro Roulette, and it has categories of uh, food, pubs, nightlife, parks, movies, art museums. And down there at the bottom of the screen it says roll. So the idea behind this is that those, those evenings when you're like, let's go out to dinner. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Well, let's play Greensboro Roulette. And let's pick food and let's roll the dice. And here's a restaurant. So when you talked about um, connecting this into social media and having points for the number of different places you go and being able to see like where your friends went and um, great places. So I thought this was just a really cool, fun idea. And then there was a Do It With Greensboro app. And this one took our permit and inspection data. Um, you could look up, say you want to build a deck on your house. You could look up by deck, see all the builders, see where they had um, worked, and see how the people they worked for had rated them. And you could also look at the inspection uh, data associated with those permits. So it started to build almost like an Angie's list of builders in your area. Um, so we thought that was that was really cool. So if if you have one of these brigades or can encourage a brigade to come to your city, they're great to work with. This kind of thing happens organically by having your data out there. So you didn't put any resources in it, you didn't put any money into it. And all these great apps just start to, to pop up. And, and they, will, they will work with you, and they will work with you on your initiatives. Also, um, I, I want to say the, the This Is Greensboro app, the, the guy that did that was 17 years old. And he has, I was told, over 200 apps in the app store. Um, so if you don't have a brigade, you might have a high school group um, that, that likes to code. You may have a community college college or a college group that's doing this, but check, check with your schools and see what's out there. You may be able to leverage some of that potential. Okay, so, can I ask 
question about that? Sure. So on like the apps, is it something that the city is sponsoring or are you guys sort of keeping yourselves distant from because it sounds like a Yelp endorsement a little bit, right? Like when people are saying how they feel about the deck builder. Mm -hmm. So is that something that the city is actually endorsing? We're just, we just have the data on the open data portal. So okay, so the app isn't tied to the city at all? Not at all. It's just um, by having the, the data out there, they, they mm -hmm. access it, they grab it, and they create all these. So how do they get the citizen data rating the builders? Well, they were they were to tie that in, like if, if you publish the app. Oh, then people could give it like three yes, stars and five stars. Could rate it. Okay. Yes, and um, and one of them um, did have a tie into Yelp. I think it was this is Greens where it had a tie into right. Yelp. It sounded like it looked mm -hmm. like it did. Yeah. So. so with that, I was gonna wrap it up and just say um, you, as IT leaders, need to lead uh, your departments into these strategic partnerships. Reach out to your infrastructure departments, uh, your planning departments. Reach out regionally to the, the CIOs around you, the schools, the universities, um, your regional councils. And, and talk with um, me and get to know the, who's working in your cities, who's building infrastructure, where are they putting it, and um, how you might be able to partner with them. So. Question. Um, you several times you said we went out to this particular place where we reached out to certain organizations. Do you have one person who's like a project lead, or do you have a team of people? How are you um, conducting these studies or reaching out to people? It's just been it's been different, you know, different way. Um, when we started Try Gig, um, we started having conversations with the I knew, um, you know, I knew the CIO at Guilford County. So I started talking to him. He knew the CIO at High Point. We started just having these group conversations, and then it, it just it just grew out, sort of on its own. Um, with the telecommunications of North State, we actually contacted them, and we knew they were building in Greensboro. Um, we had this idea about Tri Gig, and we asked them to come in and talk to us just to sort of gauge their interest and, and so that developed through partnership. Um, it, it's just it's just been different. It hasn't been any sort of a, a plan this person does this, but just um, just reaching out where you can and start to form those um, just start having those conversations. I mean if you just sit down regionally with the the IT leaders and the and the regional <coughs> councils and just start having those conversations about what you we're starting uh, a site about your fire district. We're starting one in Orange County with the two school districts, um, UNC Chapel Hill, um, th the three towns, and Owasa. And, um, um, and Duke is trying to do it, uh, a fiber initiative to put fiber in all of their satellite uh, clinics. Um, of course, they're right across the street from the UNC Hospital Clinic, so that may be a, a future collaboration all together, but uh, one, one, of the challenge, one of the challenges we have is which of those entities are going to be in charge of that. And we're reaching out to a one of the partners that we work with, like a, a, an IT partner, to kind of help with that. And, uh, um, and I was curious, uh, probably, why, why are, you, are you involved in the schools in your project initiative, uh, at least the, the K-12 schools, because they seem to tend to be the most needy as far as fiber universities. Or have kind of their staff to do that, and then do you <coughs> have any kind of regional partner or somebody that you work with to kind of help those entities work together and just kind of do it yourself? Okay, so yes, we are working with the, the Guilford County Schools. Uh, they have a representative uh, okay. in in the pro in the project. They're not um, active. I would say actively engaged. They just they're like, yes, we're interested. We want to be informed. Um, we want to know about it. And so they do come to our meetings from time to time, but they, they didn't when we were, um, at, at one point we just had to say, okay, this is the group, and we're not gonna add anymore, but anyone that has an interest can, can come and participate. So Guilford County Schools is doing that. Um, Winston-Salem
Salem is doing that, even though they were part of the MC Engine initiative, they have an interest in tri gig because of the, the regional um, the triad area that it needs. So we're working with the, um, the regional council. So you asked about who's the, the kind of pulling it all together, which is the Piedmont Triad Regional Council. It's going to be our umbrella for um, issuing the RFP and, and that kind of thing. Even though we'll negotiate contracts separately, that'll be the, the sort of the, the, the RFP will come out from
contract in terms of them letting you get on their poles? Did they put any stipulations about you guys being required to pay to upgrade the poles? I don't remember that being in there. Oh wow, that's that's a huge departure. That's the norm with their contracts is. They, well, they wouldn't even let us on their poles. Yeah, but they usually want y'all to bear the burden of pole upgrade, which is very expensive. They need that. The couple of meetings that we've had them so far, they were happy that we approached one first. Because a lot of times they'll go into or go into communities and they'll see stuff on there that it's not there, which changes the, changes the conversation quickly. Right. So we 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 talk with them and. The only addition that we would have to have to make is we would have to set our own meters and pay for our own uh, power. The power when it gets gets to that point. But that's really the only thing that we, they they even agreed to paint our boxes that we have on, on the pole on the poles. The not the wood poles, but the metal poles. That I'll say this, and I'm being very positive about the whole situation. We haven't started yet, so if things yeah. change, <laughs> do you have a contract with them? Very close. Okay. Very close. I have a master agreement. Master agreement. What kind of master agreement? Have they made that proprietary, or is that something you can share? I would assume I you can share, share it. I mean, it's public yeah. record. Our poles or upgrade you know, right. it's, yeah. yeah. How it benefits us. And it's so expensive that you can't afford the money or whatever. It's because y'all are charging them so much to get on your facility. <laughs> 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 See, that's beside the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 